Rachel Bookworms. Today I'm going to be doing my January wrap-up video. You might be a little bit confused since I posted a wrap-up number one video already. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me while I kind of like restructure my channel and figure out what like my content plan is going forward. I know I've been a little bit inconsistent over the past couple of months, but I feel like my break that I had really helped me like refocus and center and figure out exactly what I want to do in this year in 2020. So I am planning on going back to to posting two videos per week. And then going back to the other video that I posted, so the first video that I posted I called wrap up number one, but going forward I'm going to be calling those videos recent reads and I'm going to be wrapping up books every time that I read a total of five. That way I'll be able to go more in depth about the books that I did read and I think it's more valuable for you guys as viewers to get a 15 minute video where I talk about five different books instead of a 15 minute video where I'm talking about like 10 to 15 books and I'm hoping that it'll just spark more discussion. So I'm really excited about this new like structure that I have. So then you might be like, but then why are you doing monthly wrap ups? So I know that some people do still like to know how many books you read in a month and what your favorites were and all that kind of stuff. So I decided to do monthly wrap ups where I would tell you guys a couple of different reading statistics and then I would also wrap up some of like my favorite things. It's kind of going to be like wrap up slash favorites for my new monthly videos. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so in January, I read a total of nine books and of those nine books two of them were romance and everything else that I read was from a different genre which I was pretty proud of because I've been wanting to kind of diversify my reading though I do have to say that I didn't read as much as I had wanted to and I do think that it's because I'm pushing myself outside of my comfort zone which is a good thing but then also I'm like I do also really want to read some books that I know that I'm gonna love so I'm trying to kind of find a balance between those two things my friend Lauren actually wrote a really good blog post about it the other day which I'll link down below and I just completely agreed with her. So of the nine books that I read my absolute favorite was definitely Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I loved this book so much. It's a YA contemporary rom-com and it's so good. It's kind of like a you've got mail story. It has two main characters named Pepper and Jack and they end up having warring Twitter accounts with one another. Pepper's family owns Big League Burger which is like a huge chain where as Jack's family owns like a little mom and pop shop deli. It seems like Big League Burger may have stolen the recipe from Jack's family's deli for their new grilled cheese sandwich that they're debuting. So the two of them kind of get into an online war and it's so cute and they go to school together so they don't necessarily know who runs which account and then they're also getting closer to each other in real life and on this anonymous chat app and it's just written so well. Emma Lord's writing is like fantastic. I obviously gave this five out of five stars and if you want to see my recent reads video where I talk even more about it I'll link that down below. And then my least favorite book that I read this month was Normal People by Sally Rooney and I actually discussed this one in the same video as Tweet Cute so if you want to hear full thoughts on that you can check that out too but this book just was not for me. It seems like it's very polarizing. I'd kind of gone into it with the assumption that everyone loved it because it was on so many best of lists but I was really pleasantly surprised surprised when I posted my one star review that a lot of you were commenting that you didn't like it either so I'm glad that I'm not alone in those feelings. And then a book that I started and still need to finish is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgkin Burnett. So I started listening to this on audio narrated by Karen Gillan and I was also following along and reading the physical book. I just kind of like got distracted by some other things and I ended up getting kind of sick in January so that kind of like derailed some of my reading because I tend to read a lot like in the morning before work. I was kind of just like sleeping as much as I could so that I could try to get better. I really am enjoying what I read so far of this. I think I'm up to chapter five and the audiobook is so short so I think after I finish rereading The Devouring Grey on audio I'm going to dive in and finish the rest of this one and I know that'll make Alexa really happy because we were buddy reading this one together and she finished like on the second day of January and I still haven't. <laughs> And this is where things are going to get a little bit different. So in January, I got to see two Broadway plays, one of which I had pretty much been dying to see forever, and that is Hades Town. I'm so glad that I finally had the opportunity to see this one. It's kind of like a new take on Greek mythology. So it's telling the story of Hades and Persephone as well as Orpheus and Eurydice. The whole story is narrated by Hermes, 
and it's just such fun, catchy music. I highly recommend listening to the soundtrack if you don't have the opportunity to go and see the play in person, but it was so good. The stage direction was like incredible. Every single actor was cast so well. Their voices were incredible. You have like this super low baritone for Hades and then high, high, high soprano for Orpheus. So like just the juxtaposition of their voices were so good. And Persephone is like kind of unhappy in her marriage at the moment. So she's like a drunk and she's like crazy and so much fun. And I just truly fell in love with the story and I've been listening to the soundtrack nonstop. And I think that they actually also won the Grammy for like best musical and it's totally well-deserved. I cannot recommend this show enough. And then I also got to see Grand Horizons and I was initially drawn to this one because Ben McKenzie is in it and I am like a huge OC fangirl. So I was really excited at the opportunity to see him performing live. I also really like Ashley Park. She was in Mean Girls. She played Gretchen and I thought that she did a fantastic job. So I was excited to see that she was in this as well. And Michael Yuri, who is on Younger, he plays like the agent. So there were like a whole bunch of people in here that I was really excited about. This ended up being really good. It's a straight play, so it's not like a musical, but it is so funny. And it's about these two parents who are obviously in their older age and they announce to their two kids that they're getting divorced and the kids are like what is going on and they're trying to figure out like why their parents would want to get divorced at such an old age and like it's just so comedic. It's really about the whole family, what years of miscommunication can do to you and the way that the kids turned out because of how little the parents communicated. Really funny. Like it's really emotional but really funny. I totally enjoyed the show. And I had never been to the Hayes Theater which was very exciting so I was able to cross another theater off of my list. Then for TV, so staying in theme here, my friend Kelly lent Andrew and I the DVDs for Smash. Smash is one of those shows that I just never got to see when it was airing and then it was never streaming anywhere so I just never got to watch it and it just just sounded like something that I would love. It follows a whole bunch of Broadway actors and they're trying to put on a Broadway show and it goes through like the whole process from writing the musical to finding a theater for the musical to finding funding for it and you know casting everyone and just the changes that can kind of go on behind the scenes before the show actually gets to its final destination and there's obviously a ton of drama because it's a television show. Oh my god I loved it so much. Andrew and I binged season one and season season two like so hard. In season one, the main Broadway play that they're working on is called Bombshell and it's basically Marilyn Monroe's life story and I still get the song stuck in my head. I really wish that I could see a live performance of Bombshell from beginning to end because I feel like I would love it at this point. And the show definitely had like a ton of crazy moments and lots of like unbelievable drama but I was like living for it. Just in case anyone has watched it, I am 100% Team Ivy. And then I also watched the sixth season of Younger, which I really enjoyed. That show, I feel like I just binge it so quickly because they're such short episodes and the seasons are pretty short. This is another one where things are getting like kind of ridiculous and there are so many inconsistencies from the real publishing world to the publishing world that they portray. But nonetheless, it's really funny to watch and it's really entertaining just to see like the process that they go through trying to pick up books and the kind of satire on authors that are well known authors and I'm just a huge Hilary Duff fan and also Sutton Foster so I will definitely watch the show until it is cancelled. Then for movies, so first I was so lucky I got to see an early screening of P.S. I Still Love You. It was really funny because at the beginning of the year one of the goals that I set for myself was that I wanted to see a film at the Paris Theater. I had no idea what that would be but I just knew that I wanted to like make the effort to do that at some point. Then it was fate. I got an email from Simon Teen and they were like, hey, do you want to see an early screening of P.S. I Still Love You at the Paris Theater? And I was like, wow, if that is not kismet, I don't know what is. And I was going to ALA like really early the next morning with Alexa and Rachel and I had 
planned to keep that night completely free because I just wanted to like sleep and be ready for the next day, but obviously I could not turn down that invitation. So I brought Andrew with me and we got to see this early screening. It was amazing. Like I loved the movie so, so much, even more exciting. So before everything started, they did a little like trivia game, which was really awesome. And I knew the answers to almost every question, but some of them were a bit hard. Like what like locker number does someone have was one of them. And I was like, that I do not know. Then they had Jenny Han come out and she did a Q&A with the audience, just talking a little bit about the movie, talking a little bit about her books. And I love Jenny Han so much. So I was so excited that she was there. And as always, I was in love with her dress. Like it was this beautiful pink dress and I was just like, wow. So she was on stage and it was kind of funny because it seemed like her Q&A was kind of like going on for a little bit longer than it needed to. Like she kept being like, I'm still here. Like you guys can still ask me questions. And everyone was kind of like, this is awesome. But like, we also want to see the movie. And then a minute or two later, Lana Condor, Noah Centineo, and Anna, who's the actress that plays Kitty, all walked out and walked down the aisles and then came on stage with Jenny. And it was just so exciting to get to see the cast in person. And they were like, are you guys excited? And like, it just got us so pumped before the actual screening started. I'm definitely gonna watch it like a million more times at home. And I have to say that it was really fun because we were with a super enthusiastic audience, but we ended up missing a bunch of lines from the movie because people were like cheering or exclaiming or booing or you know like when certain people would come on so it was so much fun but also I'm like I want to know what those lines were <laughs> so I can't wait for it to actually be on Netflix. Andrew and I also saw Little Women in theaters which I loved so much. I've been trying to make an effort to actually watch more movies lately because I've been really bad about that the last couple of years. I tend to like binge a lot of tv shows but don't put aside the time for movies because I'm like oh that's so long but then I'll watch Watch like four 40 minute episodes of something and it's like you may as well have just watched a movie at this point. So I really loved Little Women. I really loved the way that Greta Gertwig interpreted the whole thing. I think that she was robbed and she really deserves to be nominated for an Oscar. I love the costume design. The only experience that I have with Little Women is the movie with Winona Ryder. I now like really want to read the book and I think I'm going to do that very soon but I just love the movie so much. And then I also watched Miss Americana which is the Taylor Swift documentary on Netflix and I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was so well done. I found it to be really touching which was kind of unexpected for me but I really appreciated how much it focused on Taylor the songwriter because there are so many different things that she's faced throughout her career, lots of drama that she's been involved in, and this could have been like a platform for her to make defenses for each of those things, but it was really about her like taking these unfortunate situations and using her talent to turn them into something beautiful. And I totally ended up crying during this documentary, which I was not expecting at all, but especially the part where Taylor is talking about her mom and like how her perspective on things kind of changed when her mom got diagnosed. And obviously that like hit me really hard. Then just some fun events. So besides the PS I Still Love You screening, which I included in the movie section, I got to go to ALA this year for the first time, which ALA stands for American Library Association. A couple of you guys asked me what that was in the last video, and I, I don't know why I didn't think to explain that. It's a conference that's held two times per year. They have midwinter and summer, I think. And it's similar to Book Expo in the sense that it's an industry event and the publishers go there and they hand out advanced reader copies for their upcoming titles for the next seasons so that librarians can figure out what it is that they want to order for their libraries or teachers can see what they want to include in their classrooms and also bloggers and youtubers can go to and review the books and talk about them on their platforms. So this was the first time that I ever attended an ALA and I loved it so much. I had so much fun. I got to see a whole bunch of friends. Everything was so like calm and relaxed and it was just an amazing experience overall and I'm really hoping to go to another ALA in the future. I also got to fulfill one of my lifelong goals, which was to go to Central Park while it was snowing. It like really hasn't snowed much at all this year. I think it snowed maybe twice. And one of those days happened to be a Saturday, which was perfect. It was actually Andrew's birthday weekend. So we went out to brunch and then got some ice cream and then it started snowing like kind of heavily. So we ended up walking around Central Park for probably like an hour and a half or two hours. And it was so much fun, like just to see everything covered in snow and like freshly covered in snow because the city in snow can get real gross. But the park was 
just stunning. It was like not being in Manhattan. It was such a beautiful experience and it was so nice like just to walk around together and enjoy the day and stop and take photos here and there and it was so beautiful. It was like everything that I've ever wanted. Then some New York City things that are favorites. If you're ever planning on visiting, these are some things that I would definitely recommend checking out. Again, like part of Andrew's birthday weekend, we went to Little Owl, which is a brunch place in the West Village and right above the Little Owl is the building exterior that they would use in the TV show Friends. So that was really fun to see in person. I can't believe that I never had seen it before, like having lived here for so long. So we went there and their brunch was really good. I also finally got to go to Grace Street. I have never been there, which is kind of shocking, like because it just seems like something that I would love a lot. And I was right. I do love it a lot. Jean, Chelsea, Madeline, and Alexa were visiting New York. So I got to meet up with them. We went out to lunch together and then <laughs> from lunch we walked straight to Grace Street and we ended up having a delicious like feast there. I got this matcha waffle that had Oreos on top of it and oh my god it was so delicious and uh, coconut ube boba tea. Oh so good. And then I also tried two cookie places this month and both of them were delicious. So the first one is called Chip and it's also in the West Village. It's actually pretty close to the Friends apartment building so if you're seeing that you may as well stop at Chip too. But their cookies are huge and and they are so good. They change their flavors every single day. So I started following them on Instagram in case there's ever a day where I'm like, I need that flavor. I think I have to run there after work today. So I think my favorite one that I had was cookies and cream, which is actually the one that Andrew picked out. So he's good taste. But we ended up getting like a box of six of them because it was buy five, get one free. And it literally took us the entire week to eat them because they're huge and we would split them in half too, but they were so good. And then I also totally felt pretty to an Instagram ad. So there's this company called Dana's Bakery and I've gotten macaroons from them in the past, but they started making these things called mookies, which is basically like a cookie that has a macaroon inside of it. They do like a mookie of the month and January's flavor was rainbow cookies and rainbow cookies are one of my all time favorite cookies like ever. I think it's because they they have that like almondy kind of taste. They're just, I've loved them like since I was a child and my mom and I make them together every Christmas season and I always look forward to them. And it's so hard to find like really good ones. They sell them at like supermarkets and stuff, but those tend never to really be that good. Like I feel like they don't use enough almond paste in them. So I ordered these on a whim and they were so good. Amazing. They recommend that you put them in the microwave for like 15 seconds. So I did that and oh my God, it was like heaven in my mouth. I kind of wish that they had that flavor year round, but I guess it's also good that they don't because I would probably order them every time that I ran out. But I am excited to see like what other flavors they have in the coming year. And I know that they have like pink, black and white cookies for Valentine's Day and I kind of want to grab those too. And then my last category is clothes and accessories. I totally fell in love with Sam Edelman's Lior loafers. They're so comfortable. Like from the first time that I wore them, they're immediately comfortable. I could wear them for a full day. Like they never had any break in period or anything. They kind of look like the Gucci loafers, except obviously way less expensive. So I just totally fell in love with these shoes. So I have the saddle color here. I also have them in black, but they're over toward my front door and I don't feel like getting them at the moment. And then I also impulsively found a pink pair that were on sale on the Sam Edelman website. So I ordered them too. And I really just love all of them. They like make your outfit look a little bit dressier no matter what you're wearing. And I'm definitely planning on getting a white pair, but I think I'm gonna wait until like March or April when it's more like the season for white shoes. And then my last favorite has been Abercrombie fleeces. So I ended up buying like a ton of these. This is one of my favorite ones cause it's like a little leopard print. They're so warm and so comfortable. Andrew and I like barely Barely turn the heat on in our apartment because we're in an apartment building so it's either going to be really hot or we'll be like kind of cold and can layer and deal with it so we usually choose to like be kind of cold so these have really been like getting me through I wake up every morning and like climb into my fleece and then I can do things around the apartment so I got like a ton of them and I have some of them that are designated as like my going out fleeces that I'll wear if we go for like a walk in Central Park or something and then I have some of them that are my like at home fleeces that I will never wear like on the subway or anything so I can lay down and wear them in bed and stuff. That was my 
January wrap up. So wrapping up all of like my favorite things from the month. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It's definitely something a little bit different, but it was also really fun for me to share more with you guys about what I've been up to this month. I hope that you guys liked it too. I'm really excited to do these going forward. I feel like I've been making a big effort to, like I said, see more movies and to go out more and like do more things. So I'm really excited to talk about those things here. So let me know what some of your favorite things were in January and I will see you guys soon in a new video. Bye!